Hey you, is your camera covered? In a world dominated by the internet, it's not that hard to access private information, but only a few elites have earned the right to call themselves the most dangerous hackers in the world. And today, we've put together a list of only the most elite. Stick around to the end to see our number one pick for the most dangerous hacker who ever lived. It's my nature, it's what comes naturally to me. Trust me, you'll want to see it. Arrested for credit card information theft in 2003. Albert Gonzalez executed one of the largest known identity thefts the world has ever seen. Launching campaigns against Dave & Buster's, Heartland Payment Systems, and TJ Maxx, he and his crew stole over 170 million card and account numbers. During his spree, he was said to have thrown himself a $75,000 birthday party and complained about having to count $340,000 by hand after his currency counting machine broke. The lavish lifestyle ended abruptly in 2010, when he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. <laughs> the man who hacked telephone companies and phone lines as a teenager, Kevin Polson, or as he likes to refer to himself, Dark Dante, is renowned as one of the smartest hackers to ever live. He wanted to have power over other people over the people that he saw as being beneath him. His most infamous crime was when he took over the phone lines of an LA radio station to make himself the 102nd caller, thus winning a brand new Porsche. Authorities started investigating and later suspected him of hacking into US military computers. Kevin Polson had allegedly infiltrated US military computer transmissions, obtaining classified army information. Authorities believe he also obtained classified information about the FBI investigation of overthrown Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos. He was also featured in an episode of Unsolved Mysteries, during which someone coincidentally crashed the show's tip hotline. Shortly after our broadcast, the FBI received information that Kevin Polson was living near Los Angeles, California. Polson was arrested shortly after and did five years in prison. He now works as a respected tech journalist. Nowadays, robbing a bank no longer consists of masks and guns, but rather a set of codes. One of the first in this new generation of bank robbers was Russian systems administrator Vladimir Levin. He managed to transfer a whopping $10.7 billion from Citibank back in 1995. His method was simple, accessing the bank's telecommunication system. He basically just listened to customers providing their account information. What do you see when you're in the dark? Levin was extradited to the U.S. and sentenced to three years in prison. Citibank recovered most of their losses. News later surfaced that the hacking group had sold Levin the access data for a mere hundred bucks. The hacking group in it for the quote, good of mankind. Anonymous originated on 4chan and really hates attempts to censor and control the internet. It first made headlines for a hacking campaign against the Church of Scientology. The church tried to remove a Tom Cruise indoctrination video from online, and Anonymous retaliated. Anonymous has therefore decided that your organization should be destroyed, for the good of your followers, for the good of mankind and for our own enjoyment. Other high-profile targets have included Amazon, MasterCard, and PayPal, after they cut off services to WikiLeaks. It's been called Operation Payback. So-called hacktivists secretly infiltrate thousands of other online computers whose owners are unaware of the process. In 2020, they rose to prominence again, with hacks in support of the George Floyd protests. Although they tend to come in and out of the news frequently, Anonymous is still very much alive and active. We are a legion. Expect us. There are hackers who hack for the thrill and powerful feeling, and those who hack for financial gain. Then, there are hackers who break into the system to search for aliens. We have what could be one of NASA's worst ever fake sandbanks. They're famous for doing these. In 2001, Gary McKinnon infiltrated NASA networks, claiming he was seeking proof of extraterrestrials and alien technologies. And according to him, he found it. It was a picture of something that definitely wasn't man-made. Um, it was above the Earth's hemisphere. It was kind of looked like a satellite. He also caused a shutdown of thousands of military computers. After a 10-year legal battle, McKinnon managed to avoid extradition to the U.S. and all charges were dropped. 
The Syrian Electronic Army is a pro-Assad organization that targets opposition websites and Western media outlets. In 2013, they posted that the White House had been bombed from the Associated Press Twitter account, temporarily wiping billions of dollars from the US stock market. But their strategies go further than defacing, redirecting, and crashing web pages. Since the SEA emerged in May 2011, they've claimed responsibility for defacing or temporarily destroying the websites of huge multinational organisations. Al Jazeera, The New York Times, Huffington Post, Human Rights Watch, they've even hacked the BBC Weather Twitter account. More sinisterly, they also use electronic surveillance to monitor dissidents and foreign aid workers. Since Assad has been accused of war crimes, this places these monitored opponents at significant risk. Claiming to be the hacker behind the 2016 Democratic Committee email leak, Guccifer 2.0 is a hacker who is very much a mystery. His email leak revealed that the DNC officials had hoped to derail Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign. In, in one exchange, trying to do that uh, by creating some divisions based on religion. His name alludes to the original Guccifer, Romanian hacker Marcel Lazar, who claimed to have hacked Hillary Clinton's private email server. But who really is Guccifer 2.0? A host of US intelligence experts claims he's a front for a group of Russian hackers. However, Julian Assange, founder of WikiLeaks, has cast out this conclusion and believes it was an inside job. Our source uh, wasn't from the Russian state, but if it had been from a state, would we have suppressed that information before an election or would we have accurately and fairly published it? Of course we would have published it. Once a gray hat hacker accessing private networks and exposing system weaknesses. Recognize that there is the possibility of consequences, but really I don't think that it's one of those things where consequences can be a deterrent because it, it's my nature, it's what comes naturally to me. Adrian Lamo is best known for turning in Chelsea Manning for a disclosure of classified documents to WikiLeaks. I felt a responsibility as a witness to a crime, essentially. His biggest hack was breaking into the New York Times, but also his biggest mistake. Lamo added his real name into their database of op-ed writers, then notified former hacker Kevin Polson to publicize his feed, hoping that they'd thank him. It's a shame that it had to come to this. I think that it could have been done better. I think that the New York Times could have conducted itself better, but I think that it's gonna be interesting from here. I intend to make the best of the experience, and I, intended to show that you know, this that this sort of thing can't, can't be seen as a deterrent, but I'm not going to let this deter me from doing what I do. Well, his plan went south. Instead, the paper press charges, and Lamo was fined and sentenced to two years probation. He then passed away in 2018. Over a period of five years, Greek hacker Astra infiltrated the companies of the French aviation group Dassault. He stole the data on military-grade aircraft and 3D modeling software. He then sold the data to hundreds of buyers around the world. It all came crashing down in 2008 when he was arrested and sentenced to six years in prison. And for Dassault, well, their estimated losses sit at around $360 million. And now, our number one pick for the most dangerous hacker who ever lived. Once the United States most wanted hacker. It's not a myth, it's right. real, I'm gonna prove it's real. Yeah. Kevin Mitnick's hacking was some of the most unique of its time. He used social engineering to access networks, impersonating authority figures to trick people into giving up information and passwords. He got caught copying software from digital equipment corporations networks and did time, but went straight back to hacking when he got out. While on the run, he was able to monitor FBI communications, even leaving donuts for them before abandoning a hideout. So what I did is I hacked into the cellular provider in Los Angeles that, um, that serviced the FBI cell phones uh, numbers of the agents that were chasing me. After a federal prosecutor claimed he could launch a nuclear missile by whistling into a telephone, he served out some of his five-year sentence in solitary confinement, but now works as a successful security consultant. Think we left out any hackers? Let us know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.